Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 41's English translation on the horizon, we have brand new spoilers in connection to the recent manga, in which directly ties into the finale of the Tournament of Power arc involving Goku, Vegeta, and Jiren from Universe 11, and the recent events of Ultra Instinct Goku having to battle against Jiren on today's video, we are going to be analyzing, dissecting, and breaking down some of the scans of the recent manga chapter in order for us to gain a better understanding as to what is to come for the finale of the Dragon Ball Super manga, which is rumored to happen by the end of next month. And again, if you guys are new to this channel and of course love Dragon Ball, don't forget to go ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to always be in the loop whenever brand new Dragon Ball information and news is posted onto this channel. As the beginning of this manga chapter does depict an Ultra Instinct Omen Goku having a fight against Jiren, and the fight itself does favor Jiren, but it's Jiren's overconfidence in underestimating Goku's form that ultimately gets the better of him because the battle between Ultra Instinct Omen Goku and Jiren seems to be a bit one-sided at first until Goku begins to learn more about his abilities that really begin to play into Goku's favor, especially after having to dodge Jiren continuously during this fight. And the only other person observing this at the time is Vegeta, but the way Goku taps into Master Ultra Instinct in which, yes, that does happen in this manga chapter is a bit weird because as we see Goku dodging, as we see Goku basically taunting Jiren and allowing him to feel very inferior even though Jiren is superior in power, Goku is still able to outmaneuver him and basically taunting Jiren so much so that it ultimately forces Jiren in unleashing more of his full power as we get to see an enraged Jiren begin to chase down Goku, but the way Goku taps into Mastered Ultra Instinct is not the same as we saw in the anime. In fact, in this case, I definitely favor the anime more so than the manga. Do you want to know why? Is because in this variation of the manga, the way Goku taps into Master Ultra Instinct is not due to any sort of struggle between himself and Jiren. But just by Goku having to close his eyes and concentrate out of the blue, we see how Goku immediately just opens his eyes, he has a different shade of hair coloring, it's obviously white, and he goes for the kill as he punches Jiren directly in the gut, just as we saw in the leak scans a couple of days ago, and I will say that the overall depiction of Goku having to fight Jiren now does seem very intense because the one singular shot that Goku had delivered to Jiren is able to affect Jiren so much so to where Goku literally punched the veins out of Jiren's head. We see blood, spit, everything just begin to spew out of Jiren's mouth. It's not like he's severely battle damaged, but we see how instantly once Goku punches him in the gut, Jiren drops down to his knees. And it's not like at this point Jiren is really hurt, but instead he seems to be very, very annoyed. Because at this point, as Jiren begins to bounce right back up on one of the rocks and coming back down to Goku, the fight between Jiren and Goku Goku begins, and at this point it does look like Mastered Ultra Instant Goku is not having any difficulty against Jiren at this given point, but in this manga chapter it isn't implied that Jiren is using his full power yet against Goku. And Goku while fighting Jiren, I must admit, looks incredibly awesome because every single time Goku is delivering any sort of attack directly on Jiren's body, it looks like Jiren is taking full damage. Just as if you guys go back and remember the fight between Perfect Cell and Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, that's exactly what's happening here. Every time Goku punches Jiren, every time Goku kicks Jiren, Jiren looks to be shaking and Jiren looks like he's in massive pain because there was a singular shot to where Goku had kicked Jiren so hard that Jiren is being ping-ponged all throughout the arena, smacking all of the rocks around him before having to get knocked down by Ultra Instinct Goku. And at this point, Jiren begins to unleash a blast so heavy that the only other person that seemed to have dodged the actual attack was was Vegeta because one of Jiren's attacks was so powerful and so seemingly enough immeasurable that it went hurtling past Vegeta and into the stands themselves. It literally wiped out the remaining half of the arena and the only other person that seemed to have avoided this was Goku. And I will say the overall shot of Jiren having to shoot out the entire arena was awesome in seeing the way Vegeta had played into his own hand and surviving because it's not like
like he was wrung out as we saw in the anime, but instead, Vegeta is still active in the Tournament of Power. And as Jiren is anticipating Goku's next move, Goku not only dodged Jiren's attack, but also managed to get above him and cocking back for the Kamehameha. Now, the mastered UI Kamehameha was so powerful that Goku literally blew a hole directly through the entire arena, cutting a massive hole straight down to where we see a massive crater out in the void, and as Goku begins to look down, everyone else is shocked. Belmont is shocked, the other gods and angels are shocked, Piccolo is shocked, and as Goku is looking down, he happens to notice Jiren on the other side of the crater, on the other side of the hole, except now, Jiren is clinging on for dear life. He's holding on to the arena so hard to where he's so desperate in bouncing back like the girl from the ring from this massive hole back up on the tournament stage that Jiren at this point begins to reveal more of his true power as he comes after Goku. But Goku being Goku and learning the ability to dodge, Jiren can't seem to hit him. But even after coming back and after unleashing his full power, at that point we see Jiren more on the offensive and he seems to be doing everything he can to fight off against Goku, but Goku seems to be holding his own. Every single time Jiren attempts something big, Goku counters, and that's the concept of MUI. And it looks like every single time Goku punches Jiren, he hits him with so much force that we see spit and drool coming out of Jiren's mouth. And once more, it's implied that this entire manga will will be ending roughly around next month for manga chapter number 42 before diving into the Broly movie and the Broly special, in which I will talk about by the end of this video. And again, like I said before, if you guys are excited for this, slap a like down below because here we see more of the incarnation of Goku whooping Jiren's ass as he punches him, kicks him, and avoids everything that Jiren does in the namesake of survival. And I really do enjoy how Goku in this matter does have the upper hand unlike the anime because in the anime, it was implied that if Goku were to master this, there's nothing and no one that can come in between stopping him at this given point of power, but it looks like this is exactly happening in the manga as Jiren seemingly enough can't really do anything to affect Goku at all. And in fact, every single time Jiren attacks Goku, he seems to be getting more angry by the minute. Why? Because he can't touch Goku. Instead, he manages to actually catch one of Goku's kicks and throws him out in the distance before exchanging with him, in which seemingly enough Belmont actually notices the struggle between Goku and Jiren, but he's not as worried as we saw in the anime portrayal because it looks like Belmont does know something that could play into Jiren's advantage in beating Goku. And we see the battle exchange, and every single time that Goku and Jiren are fighting back to back, the entire arena is crumbling right before everyone's very eyes. And in fact, Jiren manages to hit Goku so hard that at some given point, Point, Goku loses the mastered ultra instinct form and right before getting wrung out the one person that saves Goku is Vegeta and as Vegeta saves Goku there is a prideful moment in exchange of both Goku and Vegeta because we see them standing there they're hurt they're tired as is Jiren Jiren is bloody Goku is bloody Vegeta is bloody Frieza is nowhere to be found and seemingly enough Android 17 in the previous chapter basically killed himself, and now it's just down to Jiren versus Goku and Vegeta. Just as we saw Goku and Frieza versus Jiren in the anime, here we see something a tad bit different. Instead of Goku and Frieza, it's Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta versus Jiren in the finale of the Tournament of Power. Now as for Frieza, we don't know where he is at this given point in time, but as we see Jiren charging in at both Goku and Vegeta, Goku and Vegeta are not letting up. Why? Because because even though all three parties are damaged and hurt, they still continue to fight. Goku and Vegeta, despite being at a disadvantage, for the first time ever, they're working in a synchronized motion to where they seem like they're pushing Jiren back. They're not really damaging him per se, but they're managing to catch him off guard with their synchronized attacks, which could be annoying as we saw with Goku and Frieza, even though Goku and Frieza together could not physically
basically hurt Jiren in the anime, it looks like the same thing is reoccurring here, but the only difference is, it looks like Goku and Vegeta's movements are what's ultimately getting the best of Jiren as the manga chapter comes to a close. So there's lots of action going on in this manga chapter, lots of intense moments, but the one thing I do not agree with is the way MUI was handled in the manga. It's seemingly enough rushed, and that all plays into the effect of what's going to happen next month for the conclusion, because only then are we going to find out who wins, only then are we going to find out what happens, because in December, Toriyo Taro is planning on releasing a special Dragon Ball Super Broly chapter specifically for the actual movie roughly around December 20th, six days after the release of the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie in Japan, which is going to be debuting on December 14th. So keep that in mind and come back to this video once that happens because if you're going to be predicating this and actually working on the manga for the movie, then we are going to get more information as to what happens with Broly, Goku, Vegeta, and everybody in between days after the actual movie comes out courtesy of the manga special. And we know this because Toriyo Taro did a special manga for the ROF movie a little bit after the ROF movie had dropped. So we can expect to see a special manga chapter for that by the end of December, which the end of December is going to be really crucial because only then are we going to find out what's going to happen with the future of Dragon Ball Super, what's going to happen with Dragon Ball Heroes, if Dragon Dragon Ball Super will be returning for Dragon Ball Z's 30th anniversary next year. We don't really know if Super will be returning indefinitely in 2019, but if 2019 is going to be the window of opportunity for the show to come back, then we can expect lots of content from the Broly movie to follow up with what's going to happen in the future, especially with the Broly chapter having to be worked on for December's release. So by the end of this, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. For me, this manga chapter was okay. I don't want to say that the manga chapter was the best one I've ever read because there were lots of inconsistencies. I did not like how Jiren really didn't go all out, didn't really go full power, and even if he did, it was very mediocre in stature because the way he was depicted in the anime seemed a bit more ruthless than how we saw in the manga, but I will give Jiren effort for trying and actually trying to pump out more of his energy against Goku at this given point in the manga, and seeing their interaction in the manga is a bit interesting as well because I do agree with the concept of Jiren not being able to touch Goku especially if Goku has reached a point to where his power is basically divine to where he's even surpassed that of the gods if that ends up being the case then it makes sense for Jiren not to be able to touch Goku as opposed to the anime but with the way MUI was depicted and the way it kind of died down it was a little mediocre because it wasn't as if Goku could not sustain the god power for too long in combat but then out of nowhere just burned out completely to where Vegeta had to save him, but I do find this very interesting because the question lingers, where is Frieza, is 17 truly dead, and what exactly is going to happen to Vegeta in the next chapter, because as of right now, it's just Goku and Vegeta versus Jiren, and the question begs, what's going to happen down the line when all of these parties engage once more in the finale of the T.O.P., so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Thank you all so much for watching once more. If you guys are stoked, ready, and excited for more Dragon Ball content, don't forget to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button leave a like down below if you guys are hyped tune back in for more follow me at twitter at unreal and gaming i'll be posting more scans more awesome news information and updates on there especially if you guys want to be kept up to date with all the notifications on twitter then make sure you guys follow me on there at unreal and gaming thank you all once more and i'll be checking you all down in the comment section below have a great day everybody peace <sighs> this is the legendary super saiyan before I destroy you, I'm going to need you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and turn on notifications to never miss a single upload. Also, follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms. And if you don't, I'll destroy you along with your entire planet. <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs>